I have to. I always say that you know, whenever I do stuff, I always, I always have, I always have um, meetings in certain places with angels. I, I, angels. They either, they either represent themselves, present themselves as people, or they're, or they're angels working through people. But it's an energy. Because a young couple came up to me, and it was one of those where you're thinking there's something different about these, but I can't quite figure out what it is, and you don't really know till afterwards. And he was asking me about the film, and he says, uh, "What was your intercessor?" And I'd never heard of the word. I said, "What do you mean?" Because the intercessor is the dove; it's the holy dove; it's the, it's the energy of the spirit. It's a good question. And I said, um, and I talked about what had happened in my life and uh, how I'd, how I'd had lots of invisible support, lots of. Uh, I've had lots of guidance from intuition. I was being intuited. So I'd got, I'd got an inner voice talking to me, okay. guiding me. And he said, your film is an intercessor. Your film is an intercessionary film. I said, what do you mean by that? And he goes, it will, it will land into people's lives and it will, it will interrupt them at a point where they can start to heal. Because I'll go, what, well, that gives me permission. So, but when I looked up intercessor, intercessor is one of the names for the Holy Dove. And I couldn't stay with these people. I wanted to talk with them more, but I just kept getting pulled away from them because we had obviously we were working, we were doing stuff, but they they were they were in my life for long enough to give me that mm. message. Your message is an intercessionary message. The dove is working through you, and it's going to work through this film as long as you don't interrupt it. So that enabled me to understand the next level of storytelling <clears throat> and writing, and recognise that that energy is working through me, and I have to remove all the other energies. All, any, any contrary energy that wants to stop that force needs to be removed from my body. So I need to contract those in order to allow this dove to expand. That continues to be the process. Yeah, so I met these two, this, I had this angelic um, encounter and I knew they were angels. I could feel it. Again, like, yeah, whether it was angel, an angel energy working through them or whether they were actual angelic beings, it doesn't really matter. But what they said to me just enabled me to go away and study what they'd left me with. That was the gift. They said this, you know, what they left me with was another seed. And I went and studied that. I studied the dove. I studied the intercessor, the advocate, you know, the counsel. I studied the, what that energy is. It's an energy. And I studied... Where did you, get, where did you study it? I studied it through... Or? It's That's specifically Christian. Right. So specifically, um, uh, if, you look at the, if you look up the holy dove... Uh, Leonard Cohen writes about it a lot, but it, you, you you look at the Holy Dove, and it's um, in alchemy they would call it the Philosopher's Stone. It's an it's an extra energy that you get um, uh, that enables you to put um, God into whatever work you're doing. So that energy is is a separate energy. So when you put these two forces together, and you place yourself between the two forces as a vessel, both of the forces are burnt. Um, to create light and the light is the holy dove it's the intercessor so that so you have that energy and you put that into the work you do and that work that not only goes into the work but it also if it's if it's correct it will speak through you as well so then you just your life is about make is, is about orchestrating your life so that that can work through you and then god will put people in front of you to help you see elements of you that are blocking it and then you go through that same process again of cleaning that so it's um, uh, so if you wanted to look up the Holy Dove, you just look, just just write the Holy Dove in, and it will lead you onto lots of articles. The gifts of the Holy Dove. So in Jude, in is in um, Hinduism, they would call it the, the Siddhas or the miracles. You know, it's not like the byproducts of um, of uh, any kind of spiritual growth. And is that what helped you? Do you think from brown paper bag to then write three sacks? Did yeah. that help unpack? Yeah, what was happening? You looking at the Holy Dove and yeah, because I'd written three sacks full of hats as a stage play, and it was one of those very still in plays. We never had a full production. We had, uh, we had, uh, um, we had rehearsed. We had what do they call it? Um, we had like professional rehearsal. I can't remember what they call mm -hmm. it, but we, we where you where it's put in front of an audience, but it's just read. So we never had a full production. Okay. It was going to go on at the Belgrade, but the director had to move away at the last minute. But it's a bit of a hot potato because it's, it's so visceral. The, the play itself is so visceral and so raw that it, it, maybe it was enough just that I wrote it. And then 
brown paper bag and three sacks full of hats came from that. So I did three sacks full of hats with Debbie Anzalone and uh, we, she helped me to reduce that to a 15 minute film, 20 minute film. And that was about? That was, and that was literally about, rather than looking at my brother's life as an abstract and deflecting, the truth's there, but, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm using, um, you know, I'm, I'm transport, I'm transposing things. So instead of it being a, a, about a man, it's about a woman. And instead of it being about how he's, you know, about what actually happened around the deathbed, it's kind of just kind of uh, coming at it from a bit more of a watered down angle. So it's a very strong film, but it's not directly about my brother. It's not directly about my mum and my dad. Bag. That's brown yeah, paper yeah. bag. So this is three sacks full of hats. Is taking the verbatim story and saying this is the story, and that the, really it's the story about what happened around the around the hospital bed, about the arguments, about the dad coming up to the hospital drunk, and all that kind of stuff, and and the son blaming his mum for being ashamed, but she's she's showing him that he's ashamed. Um, and all the denial that goes around, and the play was as uh, at some point it'll probably go on, but the play is really, really moving, really powerful. I had a West End playwright wants to do it. He oh, loved, he, hey, he loved it, great. but it just one of those things that um, hasn't happened yet. So it's obviously not meant. But we did the short film based on that, um, and that was just f- helping me to understand why there was still anger there with my brother which I was uncomfortable with and I'd never voiced. And obviously uh, the anger was because of ignorance. I didn't understand. I didn't understand that he wasn't making choices. He was no longer able to make choices. He was just in pain. He was possessed of this illness. He had an illness. Um, and it was a- enabled me to write about it. It may- enabled me to sit on the nerve and write about it. So it enabled me to um, accept my own shame and let it go. Uh, enabled me to understand why my mum and dad were like they were and understand that they were very afraid and let that go. And it enabled me to understand my brother. You know, my, my God, what God said to me is all you can do with your brother is sit there and love him and not judge him. And did uh, you discover that through the writing yeah, of, all of, it. of all Three of Sex? It. Yeah, all of it. Okay. And then uh, but massive opposition to stop me from doing it again. But like what? Um, um, just tremendous amounts of fear, tremendous amounts of anxiety, tremendous amounts of... Um, old shadows rising up with voices, accusations, lots of energies, you know, trying to stop me from writing it because I was going to put a film out that was visceral and had truth. Um, right up to the day we actually was going to shoot. And then once the, we went to the film, it just all, everything, I suddenly started to understand it, I, you know, and all of the things that I was able to see, so I brought them out of me and looked at them in front of me in three dimensions, I was able to clean and let go of. And then the, the difference you feel afterwards, the love you feel for people, the compassion you feel for them, no judgment. So when my sister died, my sister died 20 years after my brother, she was 52, she died from alcoholism. I was able to access her at a level of pure love. Even though I couldn't stop her from drinking because she'd gone too far, um, I was able to access her at a level of absolute love, absolute love. And when she died, me and my mum were with her, because her and my mum, they spoke to each other on the phone five times a day. So they were very, very tightly linked. So you think, my mum's not going to cope with this. But when my sister died, um, uh, they brought the priest in, and you know we knew they were going to give her the last rites. And she said, is there anything you'd like me to read? And I said, can you read something from Paul, from St. Paul? You know, Romans 12, 20. I said, anything in Romans and, or Corinthians? And uh, she said, yeah, I can do that. So she was just reading these prayers out. And halfway through reading the prayers, my sister died in the middle of the prayer. And the priest went like that because it was so unexpected. Because nobody dies, at, you know, when you receive when in prayers, it tends to be afterwards. And she automatically changed into the prayer for the dead. Wow. And the, fa- the room just went, like we're feeling now, just a stillness. And I said to my mum, she's gone. She said, no, no, she's, she's okay, she's still here. I said, no, she's gone, mum. And the fact that she went in the middle of the prayer was such a miracle, because the, the woman, the priest said, what do you want for her? I said, we, don't, we wanted to stop suffering. She was in a coma by now, we wanted to stop suffering. 
We wanted to we wanted to be released from this. She's in, she's been suffering for a long time. We wanted to stop suffering. We just wanted to be released, and that was our wish. And when when she died through the prayer, my mum has been at peace with it ever since, because she felt God in the room. So if she ever brings my sister up, and um, because it was a very sad time, because my sister was very very poorly. She went down to under six stone, you know, and she was a bag of bones. And uh, my mum. I just said, yeah, but what did we see when, when she died, Mum? What did you feel? She said, God was there. I said, it was, it was you, undeniable. Even the priest was shocked. It was so still and so beautiful. Such a release. And that stayed with me. But it, it stayed with me in the part where, she, I think he was reading from Corinthians, when he was saying that no energy can assail me. No energy can separate me. No height, no depth, no breadth. You know, no enemy, no, no principality. No power can separate me from God. Nothing can separate me from God. That was kind of where she was talking. Bump. She did, I just watched her go. It was so powerful. And that, so, writing brown paper bag and three sacks full of hats enabled me to sit with my sister when she was dying and just access her through pure love. No judgment, no anger, no confusion, no kind of why are you doing this and you've got kids, none of that. Just love. When I was with my sister, even when she was dying, she just we just laughed and laughed and laughed. I'd go in sometimes and she'd be asleep and and she'd wake up. There's one time she was asleep and I thought, if she doesn't wake up soon, she's not I'm gonna to have to go soon. I've been, I've been there for about three quarters of an hour and I didn't want to disturb her. So in my mind I just said to her, uh, you better wake up now, Mary Jo, because I'm gonna go and she just woke straight up. So she heard me. And she said, Oh, why didn't you wake me? I said, Well, I've been photographing your bare bum. I said, you, your bare bum's got its own site on the internet now. I said, people are watching it. I said, every time you're asleep, I said, your bare, your bare arse is sticking out the sheets. I'm photographing it. I'm putting it on the internet. It's on the World Wide Web. You've got a following. You better not. You know, so we just laughed. We just laughed. So I couldn't do anything for my sister other than access her at a level of pure love. So she often got angry with other people, but never with me, because she just knew I loved her. And she knew I didn't judge her. Everybody loved her. But, the, you know, it's very hard not to let judgment come in. I don't understand why, why are you, you, you're going out, you're dying. Why have you had another drink? She's got no choice. Mm. That addiction. part of it, when she had a drink, that part yeah. of it is gone. I mean, that's another whole subject, addiction. Yeah, it does. it's massive. So the film ta- enabled me to do that, enabled me to say that sometimes all you can do is just love people. That's all you can do. And your energy undoubtedly helped your mum at that point. Yeah, Undoubtedly. Yeah, because my faith, you know, my, my faith is very, very strong. I have a great faith. I love God. I wake up in the morning and I go through the whole day. My only fear is, is being separated from God. Even though I couldn't articulate what God is, I don't know what it is. Only that I feel it and that I fear being separated from it. And I'm only separated from it if I fall into remiss, if I fall into error, you know, myself, which I do. So she felt my faith. And when I spoke to the priest and said, this is what we would like, she felt it. And uh, it was, we had a real miracle. It was very, very beautiful. So film, writing films and writing stories is a, is a process of individuation. If the truth's in the film, then the truth will speak to other people. It'll act as an intercessor. So that dove is transformed. Trans- it comes through me and it's placed into the film. If I'm brave enough to tell the truth. Yeah, that's a, that's a very powerful sentiment. Because as you you mentioned with, when you were with your sister, it was pure love, just and love, so, yeah, God, love. You know, yeah. this it's all sort of linked. When you come to do these films or when you're looking at difficult subjects, you have to delve into these darker areas. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, I mean, probably this is another podcast, but um, how how do you keep that faith of love and that connection? And at the same time, go into areas that are very challenging and difficult. Well, you don't go into the areas without God. That's, that's the key. So you learn to go deeper and deeper. You go deeper into your meditation. It's what they call being in constant prayer. So you're not dipping in and out of it. It's, it's, it becomes your inner vernacular all the time. Your inner dialogue. Everything, your, everything based around your day is based around being in the center and staying in the center and not deviating from the center. Um, and then recognizing when things come up in your life that are um, aberrations, but you think I need to get rid of that. I've still got that. You know, I'm still looking at that girl's 
bum when she's you know when i'm at a cafe and i see a girl with a nice bottom i'm, I'm still finding myself looking at that that's got to go because that's mm-hmm. taken me out of center you know or i'm still thinking too much about what's in this for me i'm doing this film what's in this for me that's taken me out of center i've got to get rid of needing to have the fruits or know the fruits just anything that's an aberration to the center to love i let go of so anything this is what aquinas would call uh, we we uh, wisdom, wisdom not doing anything that does not accord with wisdom and love is what i'm thinking what I'm saying, what I'm doing in accordance with love. If it's not, then I don't have it. And if it's in me, then I sit in it until it burns up and consumes. And I don't do that. I give it over to God. I just say to God, I can't cope with this. I can't deal with this. And I have to give it over to him. And that's about trying to be as, trying to live in a way that where you are unafraid. So that's how you, like what my friend Mike said to me recently, he had a vision that God said, you serve me when you're not afraid. You know the 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 films that you've done, uh, they they're so challenging and they're so hard because they're things that are hard to look at. And, yeah. Uh, but they've always got a message of love. Yeah. And always that, about think, love. Yeah. And I think that that's the real and that's beauty what, of that, your films. That's what what we're saying is we're going to bring out this lump of coal that's in me, this sin or this error mm-hmm. or this old script, and we're going to bring it out and we're going to purify it through this process like we're doing it now. We brought something out in front of us. And we're using sound and dialogue to break it down until it's, all we're left with is just pure love. So the film process is about me bringing out, bringing out that and extracting, bringing out that and extracting the aura of love from it because it's got love in it. The love is in there, so we have to just make sure that when we when we bring it out, that that love comes through. And if it does come through, it comes through the subtext. Um, but that's part of the process. So if I write about a subject, say like some painters will do the same uh, landscape 50 times. Mm-hmm. I do that with writing. I'll do the same subject from lots of angles until I clean it and clean it and clean it. And it gets better and better, you know, till eventually, excuse me, it's, um, it's completely cleaned. So love is the answer. Love is, uh, love is all. It's, that's all. That's the, that's the constant. That's a great um, pl- uh, place yeah. to... End of the podcast. Yeah, and when people talk about God, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, God, the universe, consciousness, it's just love. And it's a, in its, um, everything else dissolves beneath it or around it. So it's just about love, yeah. And if, you do, if, what you're, if how you're living isn't in accordance with love, then you just remove the things that are not in accordance with love. And all you'll end up with then is love. Lovely. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Pat. <laughs>